got a small loggerhead. Most certainly do. It's a little loggerhead. Now this guy was foraging on the bottom, probably trying to get to some small uh, clams or maybe a little crayfish or other invertebrate. Um, you can see this guy's stained from hiding in the muddy bank uh, throughout winter and these guys are all starting to come out and start foraging now. So that's really cool. That's a good sign of spring. Uh, couldn't be happier to see the first loggerhead of uh, 2021 out here. And just a really nice one too. That shell looks really good. Um, good weight. Looks like a healthy, uh, probably a young male, but just a good looking turtle. Awesome. I'll let this guy go back where I found him. There you go, buddy. You can see that shell just sticks out. Let's see if we can find some more. Just grabbed this pair of stink pots. Whew. Almost fell in trying to get these guys, but I got a male on the right, female on the left. These guys are both stink pots, Sternothrus odoratus, one of the more common musk turtles, especially around lakes, ponds, swamps, oxbows, floodplains. Uh, they're a pretty good generalist, but as you can see, the male has kind of developed a little bit of megacephaly that you see when they eat a lot of clams, mussels, and snails. And uh, we're going to check these guys out a little bit more when I get a better handle on them. The female here on the right has a much smaller head than the male on the left who has a much more well-developed head. You can see he's got huge muscles on the back of the head. Let me try and redirect. There we go, don't bite my hand. And uh, you can see he's got like thicker jaw structure, much larger muscles on the back of the head. And all of that is to help him eat corbicula clams, snails, uh, small mussels, and crustaceans like crayfish. So he's <laughs> pretty much ready to bite me. So I'm gonna um, set this guy down real quick. There we go. And you can really see the plastron. Males um, tend to have a bit more of the skin between the scutes. Females a smaller amount. Male has that larger tail that you see there. Female has a much smaller tail. Um, and then these guys also have a gular scute up here underneath the chin. You do not see that in the loggerhead musk turtles. So really, really awesome. Super psyched to see these guys, but I'm gonna let them go and see if I can find anything else. Here you go, friends. You guys have a good day. There you go, buddy. Back into the mud. So this time of year is really good to find all these musk turtles kind of coming out. And it looks like they're all running around getting their first real meals in them. Uh, our temperatures have been consistently above freezing. Good sized snake just took off up down the bank up there. Um, but with temperatures consistently above freezing, these guys are gonna start to become really abundant over the next week or two. Um, and at, at certain times in the right location, you can walk a place like this and see them just all over the bottom. Right now, they're a little bit hard to spot because they've all got a lot of mud and muck on their shells. So they really, br they really blend in uh, quite well. Uh, we'll see if we can spot anybody else in here. Now these shallow riffles like this are really good for loggerhead knots. This is typically where I find a loggerhead is in this kind of setup, whereas the um, stink pots and some of the mud turtles are more likely to find uh, further on deeper edges, especially ones that are very muddy. Seems to be what they like the most. All right, here's a nice loggerhead over here. Uh, this one's pretty dark sitting in this shallow water and this is exactly how I typically find them. So you have an area of flowing water like this and then they're just off to the side. They're looking for those little snails, they're looking for crayfish, little clams. Uh, a lot of times in these videos you'll see, uh, just like over here, you'll see these small broken clam shells and that's from these guys. They're eating those little clams, they're popping the hinge open, getting the meat out and then as they get larger they'll actually consume the entire thing and just crush it all up. So uh, really, really cool. Super stoked to actually see one underwater. I'm gonna get an underwater shot of this guy and then we'll pick it up, talk a little bit more about loggerhead musk turtles. These guys are just such an awesome little turtle. They, I love the way they run around on the bottom. I love the way that 
uh, in the right habitat, these guys can be so abundant that you can get to a point where you walk across a river bottom and you know, 10 of them will scatter in all directions. Um, especially when you get down into like the Florida Springs, uh, these guys are a really good indicator of water quality. Uh, and that's because of the things that they feed on need good quality water. Uh, you need to have clean water to have all those snails and mussels and clams and you know little invertebrates, little crustaceans like tiny shrimps and crayfish and that's what these guys feed on and so when you see a high abundance of these turtles you know you're in a good habitat and they're just one of my favorites. Such a neat little package too. I love their little round shell. I love the spots on their skin. Bright round eyes. They're just amazing little turtles. I love these guys. Alright, so I'm going to let this pretty little loggerhead musk go right back where I found it. And I'm gonna keep working my way up this and we'll see if we find any more. Kind of searching around this old, old log here. This all looks like great stink pot habitat. Kind of gives way to the shallower water. We're gonna check through this bridge, see what's on the other side. I do like checking through these bridges. And while I don't know my mussel species very well, I think this could be considered a pocketbook. Um, but just these guys. I mean, these guys sitting on the bottom. So these guys can be uh, food for all kinds of things that live in here. Um, everything from otters and beavers uh, to barber's map turtles, alligator snapping turtles, loggerhead musk turtles. Uh, even big female spiny softshells will eat this. So um, these guys are really the lifeblood of these rivers. And here in Georgia and Alabama, we actually have, I think, more mussels than anywhere else. It's pretty crazy. Um, and, and that's even with a lot of them being extinct. All right, I did not get another loggerhead, but I did find another female stink pot. This one was actually buried under this stick. I just saw a little round thing in the sand. I had to stick my hand down and figure out what it was. And, uh, Nice little female stink pot. So it's been a great day for stink pots. I'm really stoked on that. I usually don't see too many of these guys. Um, usually in these kind of streams, it's more loggerhead musks. So it's really cool to be able to see a stink pot. These guys are really fun. And uh, yep, that's why they call it a stink pot. They are a very strong smelling turtle. Really stoked to be able to find this guy. All right, so gonna let this little stink pot go right back where I found it gonna go right back under its rock where it was at earlier. Sorry, <laughs> under its stick that it was under earlier. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, uh, do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. So every Friday, field herping videos. I'll see you guys here next week. Take care, peace.